the Walmart version of the Edmonton Oilers. I think I got to do a follow-up on that sort of claim because I felt as though that was too compelling not to do a full-fledged episode on. Also, Fabian Zetterlin is back, and I'm really happy about that. Dare I say something controversial about him and another New Jersey Devils player? We have a lot to talk about in today's episode. Buckle up, everybody. You're Locked On Devils, your daily podcast on the New Jersey Devils. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi, this is Bryce Salvador, and you're Locked On Devils with Trey Matthews. All righty now, what is up, New Jersey? Welcome back to the Locked On Devils podcast here on the Locked On Network. I'm your host, college hockey club by play announcer, and also Devils driver for Pucks and Pitchforks, Trey Matthews. So before we get to business, I just want to say, got this on my vacation, uh, a Mickey Mouse hockey jersey wearing the Canadian flag. I thought it was really cool, had to have it, so uh, you might notice that in my little studio. But uh, speaking of studio, I won't be in my studio next week or for a long period of time. What do I mean by that? Well, Locked On Devils is going to be on the move once again, and I am going cross country. So just to give you guys a little bit of a life update before I get on with today's episode, I will actually be pursuing my master's degree at Arizona State University, and I leave in a few days. So just wanted to give you guys that little life update. So you're probably wondering what's going to happen to the show. Well, I'm still going to cover the New Jersey Devils, but you're just going to have to be a little patient with me because I am going to be three hours behind. So the Devils might have a game and I might still be in the middle of class because if they have a 7 p.m. game, it's going to be 4 p.m. on my time because I will be on the Western side of things. So just to give you guys that little bit of an update and just that little bit of a disclaimer, it's going to be an adjusting period, but I fully anticipate to continue doing the show to provide you guys the news and What's going on with the New Jersey Devils? I, you know, I have a passion for this. I love doing it. I love seeing the YouTube channel grow. I love seeing my listenership grow. And by the way, I got to thank you guys uh, times a million because last month was my best month ever here at Locked On. You guys blew the downloads through the roof, despite the New Jersey Devils having somewhat of a subpar offseason, you know, based on our expectations. Uh, you guys still tuned into Silly Season. You guys still tuned into my draft coverage. You guys tuned into my free agent signing reactions, whether it was Andre Pallott or if it was Johnny Goodrow signing with the Columbus Blue Jackets. So I want to thank you guys from the bottom of my heart for making last month the best month during my time period here at Locked On. And my listenership was like up by 50 or 60 percent or something like that. So thank you guys for making Locked On Devils your first listen. And uh, your team every day is our motto. And I just love bringing you guys the Devils news. So let's get on with today's news, shall we? So the New Jersey Devils, they announced that they have re-signed Fabian Zetterlin to a one-year two-way contract. So $750,000 worth at the NHL level. 125000 at the AHL level. So here's the thing about Fabian Zetterlin. I actually like this contract because, dare I say, is Fabian Zetterlin underrated? Because I feel as though Fabian Zetterlin, even though we do talk about him, I don't think we talk enough about him. So last year, he appeared in 14 games. He had eight points. He had three goals, five assists, and he had a plus minus of plus five. And he didn't spend any time in the penalty box. So I feel as though for Fabian Zetterlin, he definitely adds more size for our winger position. And just the fact that he's 22 years of age, he's 5'11", he weighs he weighs 220 pounds. He is definitely a breath of fresh air for our fours because one of the main complaints that our fan base has is that we're too small. And we got smaller this offseason because we went from being one of the biggest teams in the NHL to now faltering like in the middle of the pack or bottom tier in the league for average weight and average height. So Fabian Zetterlin being signed to this team, he is definitely a breath of fresh air for our forward position. And I feel as though Fabian Zetterlin can definitely provide a great amount of offense for New Jersey Devils, given how he just plays the game. And like I said, I feel as though he is just very underrated because, you know, 14 game appearances and he had eight points. That's actually a pretty good ratio, if you ask me. And he was able to just uh, show that consistency. He was able to show that production despite it being like garbage time for him because the Devils were just trying to bring up young players left and right. We were dealing with a lot of injuries and Zetterlin certainly was able to fill the boots and 
going into the season, no one was really talking about Fabian Zetterlin. Like, you would hear his name pop up here and there, but Fabian Zetterlin now, I, I think, is one of the more fan-favorite prospects right next to Alexander Holtz. And speaking of Alexander Holtz, it now raises a question, who's going to make the opening night roster for New Jersey Devils? Is it going to be Fabian Zetterlin? Is it going to be Alex Holtz? Is it going to be um, Kevin Ball? Is it going to be a Nikita Ohotuk? Like, who's going to make the opening night roster for New Jersey Devils? Which prospect do I have my money on? Well, if I had to pick, I would still say that Alexander Holtz, barring anything catastrophic, is still guaranteed a roster spot for New Jersey Devils on opening night. However, Fabian Zetterlin certainly does have a case, and I genuinely believe that he is very underrated in terms of his overall production and what he was able to do towards the end of the year in terms of just, you know, providing that spark for New Jersey Devils because for a season that really ended on the wayside because we went on, like, what, a six-game losing streak to uh, end our season, Fabian Zetterlin was definitely the guy who was one of the more positive aspects for Lindy Ruff and his organization as the season drew closer to an end. So I feel as though Fabian Zetterlin certainly has made himself a case, but so have a lot of other prospects because you look at someone like Kevin Ball. Kevin Ball was able to suppress shots. He was able to keep offensive possessions alive for New Jersey Devils. Alexander Holtz, we obviously know what he was able to do in Utica, and obviously he didn't really get um, you know, his opportunities at the NHL level, which is why he kind of struggled. So I'm banking on the fact that if we give Alex Holtz just a – bigger role maybe we'll see more offensive production and similar to what he was able to do in Utica Nikita Ohotuk was able to impress as well obviously you got some bubble players like Riley Walsh Nolan Foote was able to provide some uh production for New Jersey Devils despite struggling in Utica so there's certainly a lot of prospects who have put their names on the maps in terms of just trying to make the opening night roster but if I had to pick my top two favorites to make the team it would be Alexander Holtz and also Fabian Zetterlin. And Ryan Novozinski actually tweeted something very interesting. He said, here's the answer to the million-dollar question. How much does Fabian Zetterlin bench press? Well, the answer is 275 to 286 pounds. And to give you guys some reference, Fabian Zetterlin is 220, which is pretty impressive because before he was officially on an NHL roster, he was actually under 200 pounds because he was listed at 196. So the fact that he was able to gain some weight all of it muscle, I presume, or most of it muscle, because uh, one thing that people talk about is just how in great shape that Fabian Zetterlin is and what he can definitely uh, do in that regard. So Fabian Zetterlin is definitely, I'd say, one of our strongest players, and I feel as though he is de developing in the right direction. And I feel as though this is another player that kind of falls underneath the radar, and I love it because it's just like, uh, going into the season, not everyone's going to be talking about Fabian Zetterlin and what he was able to do towards the end of the year. But if Fabian Zetterlin is able to pick up right where he left off, then quite honestly, that's another player that can be an X factor for our bottom six. Because one of the things I've been talking about is that I want to see more production on the bottom six. I want to see more production all throughout the lineup because I want to see just more offensive numbers outside of Heischer, Bratt, and Hughes. And I feel as though Zetterlin definitely has potential to do so on the bottom six. And I feel as though he could definitely just, I want to see him get more aggressive as well. I want to see him get penalty majors. I know that's a bit of a hot take to say, but come on, dude, you're a big guy. Like get into some fights, like give us the spark plug, give us some energy. And I hope someone like Miles Wood is able to like a light a spark underneath them and just get him to do so. Because I want to see Fabian Zetterlin assert himself in the NHL. And if he isn't able to do it on the offensive side of things, do it on the physicality side of things. Like, get into the face of some players. Don't be afraid to take any prisoners because you're one of the strongest players on that rink, in my opinion. Because, like I said, uh, according to Ryan, he can bench press anywhere from 275 to 286, and the guy weighs 220. So, And he's only 22 years of, of age, so he's definitely not done uh, just developing muscle and just gaining even more weight. So I feel as though Fabian Zetterlin has a lot of untapped potential, and he's one of the more exciting players that I like to watch because it's just like, you know what? Fabian Zetterlin definitely just, just sparks my interest, and I feel as though this signing for New Jersey Devils, while it's not really talked about, I feel as though more people should definitely talk about Fabian Zetterlin and what he can bring to the organization. So that's my overall stance with Zetterlin. I'm really excited to see what he does this season. Do I think he makes the opening night roster? I think he has a case, but I'm not going to like place all the money on the world in that regard. I'm just going to say like, 
Let's see what he does during training camp. If he's able to pick up right where he left off last season, then I definitely say give him a roster spot. And if he's able to outperform Alex Holtz, albeit give him that roster spot because that's not guaranteed for someone like Holtz. So Zetterlin is one of the more exciting players. He's definitely an X factor I have going into training camp. And I feel as though he is severely underrated because I want more people talking about Zetterlin. I want more people talking about his offensive production towards the end of the year. I want people to talk more about his strength. I want people to talk more about his attributes. So that's one of the things that I want you guys to circle down going into this season, which is Fabian Zetterlin, X factor on the bottom six, more offensive production because eight points and 14 game appearances. That's actually really impressive. And considering the fact that that was his first stint in the NHL, I think that was quite impressive. And I think a lot of you can agree with me in that regard. Now, before we continue with today's show, I want to bring you guys the first live read this morning. And it comes from a product that I literally use every day. So I started taking AG1 because I wanted to be happier. I wanted to be healthier. My body's a temple and I got to start treating it as such. So what is this stuff? Well, with one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and abstinence to help start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging, all those things. So here's the thing about AG1. Its lifestyle is friendly, whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free, contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals, or artificial anything, while still tasting good, supports better sleep quality and recovery, supports mental clarity and alertness. It's the one thing that's the best about Athletic Greens is that it uses best of the best products based on the latest science and with constant product iterations and third-party testing. So right now it's time for you to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look after your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you one free year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. And now, the second live read comes from our friends at betonline.net. So betonline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your betting needs. Find all your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. Find reviews and news in every league, including MLB, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, NASCAR, and even golf. BetOnline continues to be the top online resource for all your sport wagering information from live in-game betting, scores, and podcasts. They have you covered. Head to BetOnline.net today or use your mobile device to learn more about the action happening right now. BetOnline, where the game starts. Please remember to gamble responsibly and visit our friends at Locked On Bets for all your betting needs there as well. Okay, so in the last episode, I talked about how it was sort of a compliment for the New Jersey Devils to be compared to the Edmonton Oilers. So what do I mean by that? Well, to give you guys a little bit of a recap, during my vacation stint, during my hiatus, I was kind of chirping locked on centers a little bit, which by the way, they have like 7,000 followers. That was not smart on my end, but uh, after uh, my Marty Brodeur tweet, I was just riding a high horse. So I was just like, I'll take all comers, like let's go. And I went at the locked on senators and basically one of their listeners said that uh, the New Jersey Devils are like the Walmart version of the Edmonton Oilers. And I was just like, well, of course I couldn't tweet this because I already had so many senators fans coming at me. I was just like, that's actually a compliment if you ask me, because it's just like the Edmonton Oilers, they have two great players on their roster and they're a playoff team. They're a historic team. So I'd rather be the Walmart version of the Edmonton Oilers compared to a bottom tier team in the league, like the Montreal Canadians or the Philadelphia Flyers, which I don't know how you could be the Walmart version of either one of those uh, teams in their current state. But just saying like, you know, if we're the Walmart version of the Edmonton Oilers, I'll, I'll take that because it's just like Connor McDavid, he's a once in a generation type talent. Like his style of play doesn't come too often. He's one of a kind. So I feel as though like if you're comparing Connor McDavid to someone like Jack Hughes, yes, Jack Hughes is not a once in a generation type of talent, but he's still very talented and can definitely go to a couple uh, all-star games. He can maybe win a Hart Memorial Trophy. He could definitely lead a team to a deep playoff run. So if you're comparing Connor McDavid and Jack Hughes, yes, I get it that Connor McDavid is far better and there's no ands, ifs, or buts about it. But at the same time, Jack Hughes, let, let's not just throw him under the rug. He's a really good player. 
And I feel as though he has a lot of potential as well. So my buddy, Jersey Joe, he actually tweeted something out and he said, Oilers and Devils comparison. Jack Hughes is on route to becoming a true center. Look at the pace of growth. So if you're not watching on YouTube, basically Jersey Joe tweeted me a comparison between Connor McDavid and Jack Hughes. So for Connor McDavid, he's already an established superstar producer, whereas Jack Hughes is developing. But if you look at the numbers, you just see that when comparing it to Connor McDavid, Jack Hughes is actually not that far behind because if you just look at the star probability, Connor McDavid has already established himself, but Jack Hughes has similar star capabilities and he's still developing. So I want you guys to take that into consideration, which is Jack Hughes still a developing player, but definitely can provide so much for the New Jersey Devils in for years to come. And I get that. Leon Dreisaitl is also a very good talent, but at the same time, the Devils have a lot of talent on their roster. So if we're the Walmart version of the Edmonton Oilers, I said in the last episode, basically I'm going to take that as a compliment because like if you're going shopping and you're, and you can't find like the name brand uh, product, or if you're just trying to save some money, maybe you're not going to buy the name brand. You're going to go and get the store brand or whatever the case might be. Is there really that much of a difference between the name brand and the store brand because it's like you know when you're going sneaker shopping yes it would be cool to get the nikes the jordans and adidas but if you go to payless shoe store some of those shoes are actually more comfortable and still hold up for a long period of time so i'm sure anybody who works in the blue collar field you know when you're using like you know those beater boots or those beater sneakers they're still very effective. Yeah, they're not Nikes. They're not Jordans. They're not Adidas. They're not even like Under Armors. I don't even know, but they're still very durable. So I feel as though when comparing the New Jersey Devils to the Edmonton Oilers, I'm going to run with that because I really do like that. Now, where do I think the New Jersey Devils can go from here? Because in the last episode, I talked about why are New Jersey Devils fans so negative? I basically just want to say this, guys. Look, I know I have high expectations. I know I'm dangerously optimistic but at the same time i just feel as though and i get that you guys have been hearing this last few years but i feel as though this year can definitely be different for the new jersey devils if all goes well for them so in the previous episode i just said like you know what i think the new jersey devils can definitely put their names into the wild card and i feel as though they can definitely make some noise especially with teams like the islanders the capitals the penguins teams in the metropolitan division continue to get older whereas the New Jersey Devils are still a relatively young team and have a lot of potential. So it pains me to say this. It really does. But let's look at team at like the um, New York Rangers, a young team that was able to make a somewhat deep playoff run just this past season. So I would love to be somewhat like the New York Rangers and just be young, effective, and just competing for a, a, a playoff position. I feel as though the Devils can certainly do that. But, but you know, with growth and development – you just got to see it before your eyes. So we've already seen it with Jack Hughes. We've seen it with Nico Heischer. We've seen it with Jesper Bratt. But we just got to see it up and down our lineup. So one of the examples that I used was that last season, we were able to sign the top free agent available, and that was defenseman Dougie Hamilton. Obviously, he had his name in the running for the Norris Trophy. Didn't win it, but at the same time, he was still a finalist for it. And I'm sure he was talking to a lot of teams, but ultimately he chose the New Jersey Devils and he signed long-term with us. Now, some people believe that he's only going to stick with the organization for two more seasons and then he's going to like maybe ask for a trade, wherever the case might be. But it's just like, I don't believe that's going to happen. I feel as though Dougie Hamilton wants to just carve out his legacy with the Devils organization. So what's something that I'm looking for for Dougie Hamilton this year? I just want to see him just get back into the Norris Trophy hunt because I feel as though, and going back to my Fabian Zetterlin example, I feel as though Dougie Hamilton, and dare I say this again, is he also underrated? Because I'm not hearing a lot of people talk about Dougie Hamilton and what he could potentially do. I get it. He had to deal with a lot of injury, and I get that his production just was a far cry from what he was able to do with the Carolina Hurricanes. But at the same time, I feel as though Dougie Hamilton can definitely surprise a lot of people. He's 29 years of age. He still, in, in my opinion, hasn't uh, reached his prime yet. I feel as though he definitely has a lot of room to grow and develop. So in 62 game appearances, he had nine goals, 21 assists for a grand total of 30 points. And yes, his plus minus was abysmal. It was a negative 19. But at the same time, it's just like, just take into consideration because what's the one thing that the Brat Pack has been saying, which is like, 
when you deal with a jaw injury, which is uh, Dougie Hamilton had to get a facial fracture surgery procedure done, it really does affect you because you can't really eat as much. You don't really have the amount of energy that you're used to. Really, you have to recover during the course of the offseason in order to see a full recovery take place. So I want you guys to take that into consideration when looking at someone like Dougie Hamilton because I feel as though we're not talking about him enough and what he could potentially do for our roster. He's a big guy. He's one of the reasons why we were tops in the NHL for average height and weight because the man stands six foot six and he weighs 230. So you heard me talking about Fabian Zetterlin and what he brings on the offensive side of things, but look what Dougie Hamilton brings on the defensive side of things, and I feel as though – Dougie Hamilton could definitely have a bounce back year for a New Jersey Devils. So I want you guys to take that into consideration when looking at someone like Dougie Hamilton, because the thing that the New Jersey Devils that I think we need to give ourselves more credit for is that we have a lot of potential and it's untapped potential, but there's no reason why we can't uh, just find that potential this upcoming year. So look at someone like Ryan Graves. I say he's silent but deadly for a reason. Look at someone like Andre Palat. Yes, he wasn't our top option, but it's better to go with your plan B than your plan X, Y, and Z. And yes, we did overpay him, but at the same time, let's think about Andre Palat. He's looking for an opportunity to just be sort of like a top-notch player because I feel as though during their title runs, the Tampa Bay Lightning, I feel as though he was very underrated. And I think a lot of people can back me up on that claim, which is, you know, we don't really talk about Andre Palat when we talk about those championship runs or those uh, three Stanley Cup finals appearances the last few years for the uh, Tampa Bay Lightning, we don't really talk much about Andre Palat. But at the same time, he's loved, and I feel as though he could definitely provide a decent amount of offense for New Jersey Devils this upcoming year. So I want you guys to take that into consideration, which is could Andre Palat also be an X factor? And I think he's looking for an opportunity to be one of the top players for a team. So hopefully it can give some of our already established leaders like uh, Jack Hughes, Nico Keisher, hopefully it gives them just sort of a backseat opportunity and just say, let the veterans take over and just lead us to the promised land. And I feel as though also, here's another underrated uh, person at the table and also in the equation, Lindy Ruff. I get it. It's a hot take. I get that a lot of people wanted Lindy Ruff fired. But at the same time, it's just like, I feel as though Lindy Ruff was able to get so much out of our young guys. And there's a reason why he wasn't fired during the course of the offseason. Just listen to the exit meeting interviews. Listen to what uh, Jack Hughes had to say. Listen to what P.K. Subban had to say. So listen to one of our young guys. Listen to one of our veterans. The reason why Lindy Ruff still has his job is, yes, he has a good relationship with Tom Fitzgerald. But at the same time, when you hear P.K. Subban, he said this was the most fun he has ever had on a team. And this is coming from a player who's made Stanley Cup finals runs. This is a guy who's won a Norris Trophy. This is a guy who was once a polarizing figure in the league, and he said this was one of the more fun teams he's been around. And we still see him hang out with Jack Hughes and things of that nature. So I feel as though there's a reason why Lindy Ruff is here, and I I feel as though he was able to get a lot of offensive production from a lot of players. Look at someone like Nolan Foote. I mentioned him earlier on in the show. Nolan Foote was struggling in Utica mightily he took a couple steps backwards and it was definitely disappointing to see but once he got to the nhl he was able to have a decent amount of production so i want you guys to look at it from that perspective as well which is like lindy ruff was able to get a lot out of certain players and towards the end of the year yeah we kind of gave up but at the same time what more could have lindy ruff done because it was just like he had to roll with what he was given and he wasn't really given a lot So I just want you guys to take that into consideration when you slander um, our leader in Lindy Ruff. So I feel as though Lindy Ruff is definitely someone else who is very underrated. And also someone that I want you to keep your eye out for this year is Nathan Bastian, because I feel as though Nathan Bastian could definitely provide a spark and some energy. And also with Miles Wood returning, maybe we could see a surge out of our bottom six even more. So Jersey Joe compared someone like Fabian Zetterlin to Nathan Bastian and I do agree in a sense but I feel as though Fabian Zetterlin can provide more offense uh, than Nathan Bastian can so I want you guys to also take that in consideration which is a lot of prospects who are just trying to find their footing in the league so I feel as though that um, when, when looking at the New Jersey Devils are we the Walmart version of the Edmonton Oilers 
I wouldn't make that comparison because I thought that was putting the bar too high, quite honestly, but I'll take it because it's just like Jack Hughes, the, the Walmart version of Connor McDavid, a once in a generation type player, a guy who's trying to chase after a ghost. He's trying to chase after Wayne Gretzky and his overall accolades probably won't get it. But at the same time, it's just like, you know, another Edmonton Oiler player trying to compete for history. So it's just like uh, Connor McDavid, once in a generation player and Jack Hughes, a talent not a once in a generation type player but still a talent in the league and someone who definitely can rack up a hundred or so points at one point in his career so i feel as though you know what yeah i'll roll with it we're the edmonton oilers walmart version but just because we're the store brand doesn't mean we're not effective so if you're ever going shopping and you're looking for name brand and you can't find it why don't you buy some of the store brand versions of some products and you're just like you know what this works just as well. And yet I didn't have to pay that high of a price. So let's take that into consideration and I'll roll with it. So let me know what you guys think. What do you think about Fabian Zetterlin and his overall growth? What do you think about some of the players I listed that were underrated, including our head coach, Lindy Ruff? And what, what are your expectations for New Jersey Devils going into this year? Because I'm curious to hear your guys' thoughts. So leave a comment down below if you're watching on YouTube, if you're listening on a podcast streaming service, uh, hit me up on my personal Twitter page at TreyMatt4 or the show's Twitter page at Locked On Devils, which surpassed uh, 1,000 followers on Twitter. So I thank you guys for that. As for today's episode, that's all the time I have for you. So thanks for listening. Continue to stay safe. Have a wonderful day, New Jersey. Go Devils. I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Thanks for listening once again.